Hey guys, how you doing today? Uh, today I want to do a review of this AR-15 I built. I know I do all car stuff, but I also build firearms. I have a pretty extensive collection. But I thought, I've been seeing a lot of word uh, talking about these lower receivers, so I thought I'd do a review. What this lower receiver is, is a cab arms uh, lower. It's all polymer. It is a one piece. They're about one inch shorter on the end here than your standard buttstock. Obviously you're not going to be able to do a collapsible buttstock, but to be honest, I've been running enough guns in different scenarios that collapsible buttstocks are more of a marketing thing than anything. Uh, there's really no need of a buttstock that's like that short, to be honest with you. So without further ado, I believe this is like a perfect ranch gun. And let me explain to you, for starters, this was a cheap build. It was only about 800 bucks. That seems kind of high for an AR, but what you're getting here is a piston-operated system, and we have a tritium flip-up sight from Troy Industries, which are not cheap. I think that made up like $250 for the build. So the way that I built this, normally I build the gun from scratch, everything. Uh, but Adam Arms has a deal. It's $499, and what you get is this whole upper receiver, and it's fully built, and it comes with magpul furniture. Uh, it doesn't have any sights, but you get the gas piston operated system. And if you look here, you can see their, their bolt carrier in here. You can get it right there. I don't know how much of it you can see. But anyways, $499 will get you this upper receiver, and it also gets you a parts kit for the lower. It literally includes everything but the lower receiver. So. You take this lower receiver, which is about 125 bucks. You get your $499 for this upper, and you just slap in your little pieces, which isn't a big deal. You should be able to do that all. The only thing that really requires a tool is maybe punching in this bowl pin right here. So for $499 plus whatever lower receiver you have, whether it be 80% lower or whatever, you've got an AR-15 fully functioning. And for that money, you get a piston-operated system, which is great for keeping uh, gas, all that carbon buildup out of your uh, cycling system. So it really aids in reliability. And the bolt carrier on the Adams Arms is a proprietary unit they machine themselves. It's a beautiful unit. It's got an anti-tilt system in the back. Now on this build obviously you need a good sling. And as a ranch gun you definitely need a good sling whether you're going to be on a horse or ATV. What I use are these quick connect fittings here. And what's cool about this polymer lower, and it took me a little bit of practice to figure out where I wanted it, is you can kind of just drill wherever you need to and mount this thing pretty much wherever besides where the buffer tube goes in. So I tried here. It was uh, messing up because when it was in my shoulder, it was all the sling was in the shoulder and my face, and it didn't make it possible. When I bolted it here, the sling was just coming up on my face when I put my cheek in here. But right here, it stays out of the way, and it does whatever I need it to do. On the other end here, again, I use the same quick disconnect. Let me see if I can zoom in here for you. And these mount in uh, these magpul furniture. These are called uh, the M locks. So you use these M lock fittings here and lock it in place. And it's a super easy sling to put on. This unit here is a magpul. This is the MS4. So you're just going to lock it in here, you're going to lock it in here, and your sling is ready to go. Let me zoom out here for you guys. This unit was originally white, and what they do is they stick these molds, when they blow a mold, say they want to do desert brown or whatever, they'll stick these white molds in here to suck up all that brown so they come out clean and then they can do their next batch. So. This one came out white with some blue swirl in it, and I spray painted it black. So, <clears throat> I still need to cover that up. This gun is very efficient, reliable, it is lightweight. These cab arms lowers weigh about a pound less. So you're gonna shave a pound off using one of these. Let me see what else I can tell you about this gun. I will say a downside to using the cab arms is they use a proprietary uh, takedown pin system. The front one is easy to get out, but the back one here, this back one here is going to re require some kind of punch or some kind of tool to get it started. And once you get it started, you can you can pull it out from the back and disassemble your firearm. 
but from a functionality standpoint, I don't like the fact that I have to use a tool to disassemble this gun, but it's really not that big a deal to carry something with you. You're usually gonna have a knife, maybe an extra round, something that'll stick in here to punch this out. Now for the sights, like I said, I'm using the Troy Industries uh, Tritium sights, they're flip-ups. I really like products from Troy Industries. I've rocked some of their uh, slings as well. I will say a downside to this lower is that it doesn't lower all the way. If you have your day sight up, and nine, out, nine times out of ten, you're going to have your day sight up. So it's like you have to flip it to the night sight, and then it'll sit all the way down. And I would say the tritium is maybe not as bright as some other units that I've run, but it's still visible and better than nothing. Up and on safe. So overall, I'm very pleased with this build. This is one of the more simpler, cheaper builds I've done, but being that it's a polymer and it's a cheap gun, I can throw this around, trash it, it's not going to break. I've seen tests where they drive over these polymer lowers and they take a beating and keep on going. What separates this polymer lower from other ones is traditional polymer lowers copy the aluminum lower receiver perfectly. And what that does is it creates a weak spot right here. But as you can see, since this polymer is its own design, it's very thick and sturdy and it's a one piece, it ain't going to break here. This is very robust. I've even done 50 Beowulfs with this lower and it handled it just fine. So I'm 100% positive this is going to handle anything you can throw at it. You're not going to have any issues. Another cool feature of the cab arm, I don't know if you can see this, but it's got like a chevron design in the magwell where it kind of kicks out here. Kind of, like a, kind of like a Chevy bow tie pattern. I don't know why I said Chevron. But uh, anyways, what this is for is you can use a 45 caliber grease gun mag. So you can use this lower for a 45. And I've done that. I have a gun like that. I'm going to show it to you because I'll make another video later. I don't want you guys to get two for the price of one. But anyways, yes, yeah, so you can use a 45 grease gun mag. And all you have to do is use a Han block right here. And then of course, get your 45 upper and you're good to go. The other thing I want to speak to on the cab arms lower is just the tightness. It's great. In the Marine Corps, when we would shoot with these boot camp <laughs> guns, they were super rattly. I mean, the upper and lower shake. But this, when you pin this upper and lower together, I mean, it feels like a solid piece of metal. Besides, I got some stuff in here. I want to check this out. I keep my uh, bore snake under here. But let's take this out and do a shake test. I'm telling you, it's super rigid. It just feels like a solid piece of metal. And I just, I just love it. I'm telling you, it's a lightweight gun. It shoots great. It's cheap. You can have your night sights for shooting. You can flip them down, put any kind of sight you want on there. Uh, the sling is comfortable, it's effective. One thing I forgot to show you. Oh yeah, just the ease of installation of everything. But if you want to convert this sling, you can do that. And now you can go this route. And again, with these quick connects, you know, it's just that easy. I saw two dudes do a cab arms lower on YouTube and they were just getting all this love and everyone thought it was the greatest thing. But I'm like, dude, I've been doing this for years. The company is actually not a uh, cab arms anymore. They got bought by a company called GWAC or GWAC. Uh, so I don't know what the production is going on with that, but you can find these on gun broker and they're about 125 bucks a piece. Sometimes you can get them for 99 bucks. So $800 gas operated, Tritium sided flip ups. Uh, dude, that's a killer deal. I mean, if you ditch these, you're talking about a, a $600 AR. That's piston operated. I mean, that's cheap. So, I highly recommend <clears throat> this build for sure. So, if you got any questions, uh, just let me know. I'm more than willing to answer anything on this build. Again, it was a simple build, it doesn't require any customization, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, <clears throat> but again, hit me up. Let me know what you guys think. 
or if you've done one of these calf arms, uh, let me see it. Let's see what you got. Let's uh, get this brand popular because this is a great lower. I've used it on numerous, numerous builds and it's just, it's a solid platform. So good luck out there.